Welcome to another tutorial by Burton's Media Group. This is Dr. Brian Burton. In today's tutorial, we're going to look at how to do key bindings inside the Amazon Lumberyard Editor. This is great for creating movement systems inside your game development for your avatar or character that's going to be moving around inside the game environment. This tutorial is completed on Lumberyard Editor version 1.12. Let's get started. For this tutorial I'm using the starter game and I've just simply created a new level for this example. I've already created a primitive capsule. If you want to add that you can go to your asset browser, open up the engine folder, and if you scroll down a little bit you can find all kinds of primitives that can be used for examples. In this case I use the primitive capsule and just simply drug it into the environment. and You can see it there in the environment. It is currently selected so it is viewable in my entity inspector. So let's go ahead and get key binding set. So I'm going to create a go to file, go to project settings and select input mapping. This will open the asset editor window uh, possibly pop up in one of the side areas as well. It can be drug out into its own area. So let's create a new input binding and you can select what folder that you want your input binding to be stored in automatically it will be stored under the game directory which is a good thing that's where you need all of your resources to be available for making your game so I've got starter game and I can create a new folder and say call it um, assets and then under assets I'm going to create the movement input bindings and save it to assets. There we go. And now we've got our input event groups option available to us. We'll click the plus sign by that and create our input groups. Now each event needs to have a name. That's how we will access it through either Lua scripting or script canvas. So I like to go with very straightforward names like forward, backward, strafe left, strafe right, left, right, uh, rotate, uh, up, down, whatever you need to name your movements or how you want to associate them. I always try to use the same names so that it makes sense when I'm programming. I'm going to show the forward and backward system in this example. So let's go ahead and show the event name for forward. And do, do notice that I did capitalize the F. Capitalization does matter. And then you need to add your event generators. Now, for the forward movement, that can be a, the key press of W. It could be using a controller on the D-pad, or it could be your mouse. That's up to you. How do you want these to be associated within your game environment? So let's go ahead and add those different event generators that will call this event forward. So we'll hit the plus sign. By default, your class to be created is an input class, so just simply click OK on that. And now I have a new event generated. By default, it goes to gamepad button A. I'm going to change that to the keyboard and scroll down that I want this to be associated with the W key on the keyboard. You can also set a multiplier or dead zone variable for how quickly you want this to be done. So we've got a keyboard for pressing the W. We'll call the forward input event group. Let's go ahead and add a second event generator. And this time I'm going to do it for my control pad, so or my game pad. And this time it's going to be the D up. So whenever the D-pad is pressed up, they're going to move forward. And again, you have control over your event multiplier and dead zones for this. So I now have two different event generators that will call forward. You can have as many as you want. Whatever is going to work within your game environment, you can specify that inside your input bindings. So we've got the forward finished. I'll shrink that. And let's go ahead and add backward and we'll add two events for that. And again, use the keyboard. Order does not matter. I just simply like to do the keyboard first. And S will take care of backward movement. 
and on the keypad let's do down for the D button for movement for backwards so now we have backward and forward movement ready to go all we need to do now is save what we've been doing this is now created and now we can associate it with our character again I'm using the primitive capsule you can select it in the entity outliner or click on it in the view and we'll click on add component go down to gameplay and select input and then under input you need to select what the event bindings are going to be associated with so in this case I'm going to my assets folder and select movement input bindings click on OK and now this is now associated for movements utilizing those inputs that I put. You could also add strafe left, strafe right, up, down, whatever you need to do. If you found this helpful, you might want to check out our textbooks on Burton's Media Group. We've got all kinds of useful programming tips or using Script Canvas within Amazon Lumberyard.